John French here from the Abrams Planetarium. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today about how to use a telescope and some of the things that you would want to know about how to point the telescope, how to align the telescope, and uh, things like that. It's a beautiful sunny day and uh, maybe we'll even try observing the sun today and see how that goes. But the same techniques that you use during the daytime, you would of course use at night when you are looking at the moon and planets and stars and things like that. So let's begin. So this type of telescope is known as a Dobsonian telescope and Dobsonian refers to the type of mount that the telescope uses. Uh, it was invented by a guy named John Dobson and it just basically moves up and down and side to side and so it's very simple. It's another name for it would be an alt azimuth mount which means it moves in altitude or the height and it moves in azimuth or the direction. Now up on this part of the telescope you have the eyepiece, the focuser, the finder scope, and there's some little adjustment screws on here and tightening screws that I'll tell you a little bit about. This small telescope that's attached to the main telescope is known as the finder scope and you use that to help point the telescope. So way down at the back of the telescope you can see the objective mirror. In this case it's a six inch mirror. So it has a six inch aperture. And that's down at the very bottom of the telescope. Uh, there's no lens on the front of the telescope. It's just open right there. Uh, this device right here holds a little small mirror that's known as the secondary mirror that is a little diagonal mirror that sends the image and the light from the stars up through the eyepiece. So it, the light comes in from way in outer space, hits that primary mirror down at the bottom, bounces up, hits the secondary mirror, and shoots out the side of the telescope through the eyepiece. When you try to use the telescope to look at something, uh, one of the first things you do is just kind of get down behind it and just point it in the direction that you want to look at something. And so I'm going to just aim it at the tops of one of those trees there. So if you just get back and kind of eyeball the uh, tops of the trees over there and get it close, you're pretty good. And then you look through the finder scope. And in the finder scope, there's some little crosshairs. And you just center those crosshairs on the thing that you are trying to look at. Hopefully you have pointed it close enough that you can see it within the finder scope, which has a pretty wide field of view compared to the telescope. And so I'll look through there. And I see that it's pretty close, but I'll have to adjust it to center it up on the, I'll have to adjust it to center it up on the crosshairs. And then once you have that, you look through the eyepiece, and then you turn the focusing wheels here to get it to focus in on what you want to look at. And you might have to do a little adjusting to move it, and you can just move it around by just going up and down. One of the things that you have to do sometimes if you or just starting an evening of, of observing is to adjust the finder scope. You want to adjust this so that it's exactly in line with the main tube of the telescope. And there's some little adjustment screws on here to do that. And the way that I usually like to do it is first try to find um, some distant object. Like if you're doing it in the daytime, find some distant object like the top of a flagpole or a tree or something that's really far off and I have some trees off in the distance so I'm going to try pointing it at those trees and I'll look through the finder scope and find just the top of the tree that I'm interested in and usually if it's a, if it's something near the horizon you can just scan 
along the horizon until you find the thing that you want to look at and uh, it's usually pretty easy to find. Alright, so I have it right on the top of the I have it right on the top of the tree that I'm going to look at. And I have it right in the crosshairs. And then I look through the main telescope and if it's not exactly on the center of the uh, on the center of the object that you're looking at, just move the telescope until the thing you're trying to get it on is right on the money. And then look through the finder scope and turn these little knobs until the view in the tip of the until the thing you're looking at is exactly where you want it to be. And then once you've done that, your finder scope will be set up for the rest of the observing session. Now it it will should stay all night long or as long as you're out looking, but uh you know, if you take the telescope in, you bump it or uh, you do something like that, you might have to adjust it each time you start an observing session. So the eyepiece of the telescope can come out very easily. You just loosen these little set screws and the eyepiece just comes right out. Uh, you can change to a different eyepiece if you want and different eyepiece will give you a different magnification. Eyepieces usually come in different sizes designated what their focal length is in millimeters. There's a 25 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. The bigger the number, the lower the power. So this 10 millimeter eyepiece has more magnifying power than the 25 millimeter eyepiece. And typically you want to start with the lowest power and then if you want you can move up to a higher power. One of the things you never want to do is point the telescope directly at the sun. Uh, it can be a very dangerous thing unless you really know what you're doing or have a, a solar filter. In this box I have a solar filter that allows us to look directly at the sun and this solar filter goes over the front of the telescope. It's very important to only use this kind of an, a, a solar filter. The, I don't even know if they make them anymore but there used to be uh, telescope solar filters that would attach to the eyepiece end and they were really very dangerous and so I think they've really been kind of discontinued. If you ever find an old one, just throw it away. They're very dangerous. But the kind that go over the front of the telescope are not too bad. Um, so I've got the solar filter on the front of the telescope. And now it's safe to use. And by the way, I'm going to take the finder scope off. It just loosens by a little set screw. I'm going to take that off because sometimes the sun can damage the little crosshairs inside the finder scope. One of the easiest ways to point the telescope when you're looking at the sun is to use the shadow of the telescope. Turn the telescope until the shadow looks like a round circle because then the sun is shining directly down the tube of the telescope. And you get pretty close that way and then you can just go ahead and look through the eyepiece again being sure that you do have your solar filter on nice and tight and there it is now another solar observing technique that uh, you can do is build a solar funnel. Uh, you can probably find some instructions on the internet on how to build this, but it's basically a funnel with a telescope eyepiece built into one end, and this material is just rear projection screen. And if I put this into the eyepiece holder, 
or the focuser, then you get an image of the sun on the back of the telescope uh, viewer. And I'll move the camera around so you can see it. So here we have an image of the sun projected onto this rear projecting screen. And that's a very safe way to observe the sun. Right now there's not a lot of activity on the sun. Sometimes you will see some tiny little spots on there and those are sunspots, but we're near a solar minimum right now so we don't have a lot of sunspots there. Uh, you can see if I focus it, it gets out of focus and back into focus and out of focus again. Now another way to observe the sun, but you have to be very careful when you do this and really only do it under close responsible adult supervision, is to take the solar filter off and project the sun onto a screen of some sort. Here I just have a white cardboard box and if I move the telescope I can turn it and focus it and then we can see the sun projected right there onto the box. Now one of the reasons it's very important to do this only if you know exactly what you're doing and have close adult supervision is because notice if I take a piece of wood or your finger or your eyeball and put it right up there to the telescope it would burn that very quickly and that's what would happen to your eye if you were to put your eye right up to the telescope without a solar filter on it so do be very careful if you ever take the solar filter off of the telescope it doesn't take very long for that to start to burn notice if I put it there, we'll, we'll count when I get it into focus there right where your eye goes. Even before it gets in there, it starts to smoke. And so, yeah, that's uh, not a smart thing to do. Uh, you have to be even very careful not to get your fingers too close to it because it can burn your fingers. Well, there's a little bit about how to use a telescope. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, be sure to let us know at the Abrams Planetarium. We'd be glad to help. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.